Please rise. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for this morning's message comes out of the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 10 that Pastor Lee read a few moments ago. And I'll read again verse 37. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This is the text. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, our reading for this morning is part of a set of instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples as he was sending them out on doing some mission work on his behalf. Matthew tells us way early in that chapter that Jesus had empowered them and had authorized them to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Now, that would have been an impossible task for them to do on their own. But because Jesus was the one sending them, and Jesus was the one giving to them his authority and his power then that meant that no obstacle was beyond their reach. And so our reading for this morning actually comes at the tail end of those instructions that Jesus was giving to them. And it's almost like they were kind of going out the door, and Jesus said those things, and that was the last thing they heard. And almost to the point that, and and I kind of get this sense, that as they went out the door, they couldn't believe what they heard Jesus saying. And maybe even one or two of them turned to the other one and said, can you believe that? Can you believe what he just said? What did he just say? He said, anyone who loves his father or mother or his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What? What a shocking statement for Jesus to make to his disciples, and for that matter, to his disciples, you and me, here today. So we better kind of pull that apart a little bit so we can kind of get our minds wrapped about what it is that he's actually saying and what is it that he means. So the first word that we want to grapple with is that word love. Now, now you know in the Bible, the Bible has a lot of different words for love. In the Greek language, it was like that. There were different uh, sides of love, if you will. And so the word that he uses here is the word phileo. And what phileo means is it has to do with, with where you place your affection or the emotional response that you have toward somebody else. And for most people, the relationships that mean the most to us are with their families. What's interesting in this particular chapter of Matthew, though, is Jesus hits family relationships rather hard. He says some very provocative things to his disciples about family relationships, things that are kind of hard to hear. He says, brother will betray brother. Children will rebel against their parents, and a man's enemies will become the members of his own household. And then, he says, on top of it, the words that we hear this morning. So what's his point? His point is that our worthiness as followers of Jesus Christ are directly tied to our loving him. And loving him more than the love that we have for parent and children or anyone else for that matter. Now, now again, notice what he's saying. He's not saying don't love your family. But what he is saying is that discipleship requires us to think about where we place our affection and where we place the priority of our loving. So that if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, then he is number one, and everybody else is number two. That may seem hard to take. 
except for the fact that Jesus knows something that we often fail to realize. And that is, you love others best when you love Jesus first. Let me say that again. You love others best when you love Jesus first. You see, when Jesus is our first love and everybody else is your second love, what you discover in your loving is a richness and a capacity for loving that you never thought possible. So we need to kind of unpack that a little bit. I want you to think right now of the people that you have in your life. Your spouse if you're married, your kids if you have kids, your co-workers, your friends here at church, maybe people that you go to school with or work with, maybe even people that you socialize with. Now, when you think of them, their name comes to your mind, and maybe there is even a picture of them in your head. What are the kind of positive qualities that you think of when you think of that person? Maybe it's somebody that's kind to you. Maybe it's someone that is respectful of you. Maybe it's somebody that speaks well of you even when you're not around. Maybe it's somebody that goes out of his way to help you, for example, with your iPhone when you're an Android person. And then when they help you, they don't lord it over you as if you were the dumbest person in the room. Now, if those people have any of those kind of qualities or any qualities like that, and that's how they literally are when they are around you, then when you think of their name and you see their face in your mind, you're very likely to put a smile on your face. People like that are easy to love, aren't they? We easily extend ourselves to them because they easily extend themselves to us. But what if they didn't? What if they aren't kind to you? What if they treat you with a kind of less than, a kind of contempt for you? And every chance they get, they would tear you down instead of build you up. And they would do that with others, and they wouldn't care at all whether you heard it or not. And instead of going out of their way to help you, they instead would be people who feel like it's your job to be in service to them. How do you feel about loving those people? How do you feel about placing your affection toward them? Not so well, I suspect. Because whatever it is that we give to people like that, often we do not get any in return. Unless you love Jesus first. You see, dear friends, what loving Jesus first means is that you see your loving not as something that originates with you, but rather it is an extension of the loving that God has already done for us in Jesus. And you see, when you think about it that way, that changes the frame entirely. Because what it, when it starts with the sacrificial love that Jesus had for each of us that took him to the cross, oh, that's a whole different perspective, isn't it? You see, when Jesus laid down his life to pay the price for our sin, not his, but ours, and paid the price so that we could be forgiven and have a place with him in heaven, then he was giving to us not only the opportunity to do the same kind of loving to other people, but the privilege and the power to do it. And you see, what motivated God to do that for each of us was the fact that he loved us deeply and still loves us today. It came out of the heart of love that God in Christ has for each of us. And it is each 
and every one of us. You and me, who is and has been the same person to God that you and I struggle with in each other. Oh yeah, what we have a hard time in loving with other people is exactly what God has a hard time in loving each of us. But in the same way that God extends his affections toward us, that God extends the blessings of his love toward us, where he forgives us and then calls us to be his own, we have that same opportunity to do that with each other. The reality is, is that sometimes it is hard to do that. And you see, that's what makes us realize this idea that it might be that loving Jesus includes the taking up of a cross as we follow Him. And you see, that cross might be loving other people whose path crosses yours at work or in school or at church or even in your own family. You know, generally when it comes to crosses, we're not in favor of them. They're hard. They're tiresome. And if anybody ought to know anything about a cross, it ought to be Jesus because he bore his all the way up until it bore him. But you see, when you love Jesus first and everything else second, then the power that you have within you is the power that is beyond you that is then given to you. And that's what makes it possible to do what Jesus is talking about, where he says, take up your cross and follow me. The cross of loving others who might be so hard to love could well be part of God's calling to you. But when you love Jesus first, you're not worried about the burden of that. You're not worried about how other people treat you. You're not feeling as if somehow you're missing out on some justice in your life because things aren't fair and things aren't right. Maybe they won't be. But when you love Jesus first, you are delighted at the opportunity that you have to be the extension of God's love for you. So, dear friends, let's live in that love, the love that God in Christ has for each of us. But let's remember that it begins with His love for us and that we, in turn, love Him first. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.